And Social Security, when they say no, doesn't necessarily mean no. Doesn't necessarily mean no at that particular time, and it just might not mean no forever. So let's talk about that. With any agency, particularly the Social Security Administration, if they ever deny your claim, and this has to be an official decision, so a lot of people go into the Social Security Administration and they ask a question if they're entitled to X, Y, or Z benefit. And Social Security, when they say no, doesn't necessarily mean no. Doesn't necessarily mean no at that particular time, and it just might not mean no forever. So let's talk about that. With any agency, particularly the Social Security Administration, if they ever deny your claim, and this has to be an official decision, so a lot of people go into the Social Security Administration and they ask a question if they're entitled to X, Y, or Z benefit. And here's, here's how the offices are set up and the phone, the 800-772-1213. It's um, the people at, used to call the front windows, but uh, now in the old days, prior to about five, six, seven years ago, you'd have the front windows and then you'd have a back office and social security would call that front FEI front in interviewing. And that's where the specialists, you know, the retirement disability, SSI spouse benefits, surviving spouse benefits, that's where they work. So you, you could differentiate between, you know, the, the generalists in the front windows and the experts that actually take the claim in the back. But now, because of safety reasons, they're all essentially front windows. So it's, it's difficult to tell who you're talking to. So you, if, if you go in and you think you're entitled to something, spouse benefits, survivor benefits, whatever the case may be, and then the person at the front window says, no, you're not, th that is an unofficial decision. That's not a decision. So the first thing I would do is say, hey, are you a CS or a CSR? A CSR is a customer service representative. That's the front line, the generalists, the, the, the least paid, hardest working in my estimation. But in terms of expertise, unfortunately not there. So say, well, thank you for your opinion, um, but I would like an official decision. I want to set up an appointment. I want to see a claim specialist in the back today or whatever the case may be. And then a claim specialist will take your claim. So if you think you're entitled to divorce spouse benefits, surviving spouse benefits, retirement, disability, then th you only get official decision until you get a letter essentially in the mail that says, no, you're not entitled to those benefits because, you know, there's certain limits, you know, um, if you say, well, um, I, I was married to this person, but I was only married nine years. No, you had to be married 10 years. Um, that is obviously a, a, a denial. But if you file for disability, you file for independently entitled divorce spouse, which I'm telling people, I please share this. So many people out there are not receiving divorce spouse benefits because they're sitting around waiting for their divorce spouse to file for benefits. And you do not. You're throwing money, you're throwing money away when you do that. As long as your divorce spouse is 62, you can file for benefits regardless if they filed or not. So I'm telling people that they're going to their local social security office. They're talking to the frontline generalists and the generalists were telling people, no, you can't file until that person files and they're going away and they come back and say, Ed, you told me. And then I give them the reference number, the palms reference number, which is the policy manual that social security uses. They go back into the office and they get their money. So, but any official decision that you get, not just someone saying, whatever, an official decision, a letter, you can appeal. So the first step in appeal is a reconsideration, SSA 561. So you request a reconsideration and say, I disagree with your decision. And then somebody else in that particular office reviews it and sees if the first person made a mistake, made the right decision. And if they deny your reconsideration, then the next step is uh, an, an appeal through an administrative law judge, a hearing, which unfortunately takes forever. But, uh, you know, these are your benefits. And, you know, for decades, you know, it's important that you go through the process. And I've got videos explaining how to do the reconsideration. The reconsideration takes about 10 minutes to fill out the form. The appeal takes about 10 minutes to fill out the form. Pretty easy. Then you just have to, unfortunately, the, 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 wait, the waiting game as we used to say in the Marine Corps, hurry up and wait. 
Um, but you can do this in terms of disability, overpayments, they could deny you for survivor benefits or whatever the case may be. And you think in terms of survivor benefits, spouse benefits, come back here and say, hey, Ed, um, you know, this is what they told me. And I'll tell you whether it's yes, that's a correct decision. If it's not a correct decision, then you go back and, I'll, and I can provide you the, the references to take back in case you have an issue with that. Um, so you have those type of appeal rights when they say no. Doesn't necessarily always mean no. You can appeal those. Another way um, things change. So in this case, no does not always mean no forever. What we see happening is people go into Social Security. So this is particularly for spouse benefits, living spouse benefits, divorce spouse benefits, surviving spouse benefits. And or they call the 800 number and they say, hey, I am, you know, uh, I want to file for spouse benefits. And how it works is, OK, are you currently married to this person? Were you married to this divorce spouse? Were you married to the person for 10 years? Didn't have to be consecutive years. If you remarried the same person the following year after you divorce them, Social Security can add those two periods together as long as it's 10 years. Another exception. There's just too many exceptions. Um, and if they say at that particular time, you're not entitled. What's happening is people think, that's it. I can never get benefits from that person again. Not necessarily, because remember, for spouse benefits, you can get up to 50%, but your benefit amount has to be less than half of their benefit amount. And remember, always don't look at your check. That's your MBA, your monthly benefit amount. You want to look at the PIA. That's how Social Security determines the 50%, the primary insurance amount, which is the benefit at your full retirement age. So they compare your PIA with your spouse's or your divorce spouse's PIA to see if it's less than half. Um, but the issue is people do that five years ago and they were told, no, there's no more money. You can't get any more money. Well, maybe at that time, yes, but things have changed. Maybe that person started working more and paying more into social security and their PIA went up and now there is money left over there. Um, or what I see a lot happening is again, living spouse, 50%. Surviving spouse, you can get up to hundred percent. So five years ago, you were not qualified. You were not entitled to benefits on that record. But since then that person has passed away and now it's 100%. There are way too many people out there that are just walking around needing that money and not getting it because they were told no. And things have changed. That person has now passed away and it's yes. So, and there's a lot of money out there um, that are just sitting around waiting for people. So please, if, if, this, if this doesn't apply with all my videos, I always say this, all my videos, you're saying, well, I don't care about this, doesn't apply to me. Please just don't think about yourself. Think about your relatives, your aunts, your uncles, the lady down the street that's struggling and just, you know, go over there and have a cup of coffee and say, hey, you know, I, you know, I'm having a hard time with Social Security. Weren't you married at one time? Oh, yeah, I, I went in there five years ago and they said I'm not entitled. Hasn't she passed away? There you go. Now you're you are going to be a hero because you're going to find money for people that really, really need it. Another Social Security, really, the employees need to do a better job at this. When you file for disability, Social Security, what they do is they, what we used to call it, what they still call it, I'm retired now, so I don't call it that anymore, addressed both programs. Social Security disability, there's two programs. There's SSDI and SSI. SSI is the welfare-based program, supplemental security income. SSDI is Social Security disability insurance, the one, you know, your insurance that you actually paid FICA taxes for and everything. Um, and when you file for disability, they look at both programs. And if your benefit amount is over this year, $943 for a regular social security disability, you've got other income and resources, you're married, your spouse works, whatever the case may be, you're not entitled to the welfare part of it. So they send you a letter, you file for disability, you go in there and file for disability. And then a week later, later, you receive a letter that says your application was denied. And what the social security employee should do, they should make you aware of that. They should say, but Social Security is at a 27 year low staffing, so they're having a difficult time even keeping up nowadays. Um, what they should say is, hey, you're going to receive a letter in about a week and it's going to say you're denied. 
that's only for the SSI program, the welfare-based program. You look on the top of the letter and it'll say supplemental security income. Don't worry about that. That's because you've got more than $2,000 in the bank. It's because your spouse works. It's because your benefit on your on SSDI is going to be over $943 or whatever the case may be. Um, you're getting a pension, whatever. So don't worry about that. On the SSDI part, still moving forward, they're going to send that to the DDS, the Disability Decision Service, Determination Service that makes the medical determination. But in terms of SSI, you're going to receive a denial letter. You're not denied. Just You're denied just for that program. The other part is still moving forward. So um, people kind of freak out about that, and rightly so, because they're not told that they're going to get a denial letter on something so quickly. So you've got appeal rights, things change, and you were not entitled last year, five years from now, but that might change.